Hey guys, WhiteFox1225 here, and today we'll be taking a look at some of the lore surrounding one of my favorite Elder Scrolls races, the Khajiit. You might not know, but there are actually a ton of different breeds of Khajiit, 16 to be exact, at least that we know of, and they range from being the size of a house cat to giant tiger-like warriors. With the Elsewire expansion coming soon for ESO, it's already confirmed that we'll see some of these new races. So I thought it would be fun in today's video to go over some of them and dive into some Khajiit lore. I want to start this video by clarifying that any breed of Khajiit can give birth to any other breed. The breed a Khajiit is born as doesn't depend on its parents or genetics, but rather the moons it is born under. On Nurn there are two moons, Secunda and Masser, also known and worshipped by the Khajiits as Joan and Jode. And like the moon on our planet, each has different phases, and the phase of each moon during the birth of Khajiit determines the type of Khajiit it will be. There are really 8 types of Khajiit with a rat variation of each, the rat being the larger and stronger version of the breed. But let's start going over these, when Masser is new and Secunda is waxing, the Khajiit will be an Ohm's rat. These are the Khajiit that we saw in the second Elder Scrolls game Daggerfall, they look more like man than cat, with the only difference being that they have light fur covering their body, and they have a tail. Both the Ohms and the Ohms Rat are said to paint or tattoo their faces to better identify themselves as a Khajiit and not as a human. So next we have the Ohms, which is born when Master is new and Secunda is full. We saw the Ohms in the first Elder Scrolls game Arena, and they're often used as diplomats because of their appearance, Maybe the other races of Tamriel are more likely to negotiate with someone that looks like them, which does make sense given the racism that we see across Tamriel. It's also said that the Ohms look incredibly similar to the Bosmer, except they tend to be a bit shorter. The Sante Rat is next on our list. They are born when Master is new and Secunda is waning. We see these guys in Redguard and Marwind, and it's kind of debated whether or not they're the Khajiits we see in Oblivion and Skyrim, although they most likely are. Their height and build are similar to men, but that's about where the similarities stop. They're covered in fur, they have claws and a tail, and they are the most common Khajiit outside elsewhere, and probably what you picture when you hear the word Khajiit. Sadly, it's said that in Morrowind, they're also the most popular breed for Khajiit slavers. Like a lot of the non-rat variations, the Sunthe are almost identical to the Sunthe rat, except they're smaller and weaker, and they are born when both Master and Secunda are new. Moving on, when the moons are waxing, the Cathay Rat is born. The Cathay Rat is very similar to the Sunthe Rat, except they're stronger and taller. They're also known to look like jaguars, which you can see in the concept art on the screen. Their counterpart, the Cathay, are born under a waxing master and a full Secunda. And they are smaller than a Cathay Rat, but still stronger than a Sunthe Rat. When Master is waning and Secunda is new, the Alfique will be born. And an Alfique rat will be born when Master is waning and Secunda is waxing. These are one of the most unique types of Khajiits, you can see some concept art from ESO on the screen. They're described to basically be small domestic cats, in fact, the pocket guide to the Empire calls them little more than an intelligent house cat. According to some of the in-game books, they cannot speak, but Xenomax confirmed recently that they will be able to talk in the new Elsewhere expansion for ESO, so it seems like they might have changed their mind on that. The Alfik are by far the smallest Khajiit, with the Alfik rat being slightly larger. The Toje rat is born under a waxing master and a waning Secunda. And the Toje is born under a waxing master and a new Secunda. Nothing is known about the Toje other than that they live in the southern marshes and jungle regions of elsewhere, and one can assume that the Toje rat is obviously a bigger version of the Toje. Now the Sench rat is a product of a full master and a waxing Secunda. They move around on all fours, are said to be the size of a full-grown horse, as tall as two Altmer men, and supposedly weigh the same as 50 elves. Those measurements might be a bit over the top, but either way, they are the biggest Khajiits, and probably the coolest thing about them is that they're known to Imperials as battle cats, because at times of war, the other smaller Khajiits will ride them into battle. The Sense Rat will be in the new ESO expansion as well, and there'll be a mount that the player will be able to ride, which I'm pretty hyped about myself. The Sense is born with two full moons. The Sense, of course, is the smaller version of the Sense Rat. Still traveling on all fours, the main difference being that they have an ape-like look, with long rear limbs and thick forelimbs. 
Typically, they have yellow eyes, tawny fur, and stripes the color of dried blood. Next up, the Parmer Rat are Khajiits of a full master and a waning Secunda, and the Parmer are of a full master and a new Secunda. Not much is known about the Parmer other than that they look a lot like tigers, and luckily, we have a few drawings of them from Elder Scrolls Legends, and you can check those out on the screen right now. The Dagi are born when Master is waning and Secunda is new. The Dagi live high in the trees of the lush Tenmar forest. Their smaller size and light weight make the tree branches a perfect place for them, and they've even fought and defeated the Bosmer in their own forest of Valenwood. The Dagi are very skilled spellcasters, and the Khajiit use them as such in battle, and they have a natural affinity for magic similar to the Bretons or Altmer. Now the Doggy Rat is born when the moons are waning. They're almost identical to the Doggy, just a little bit larger, but still small enough to dwell in the treetops and just as skilled at magic. Although not a separate breed, there is one more very specific type of Khajiit we have to talk about. The main is the spiritual leader and ruler of the Khajiit people, who is born in the rare case that Master and Secunda align, creating a sort of eclipse and legend has it a third moon will then appear in the sky. The main typically lives in the capital of Torville and leads the people of elsewhere making political and leadership decisions. There is only one main at a time and when the time comes for a new Khajiit born under the eclipse to become a new main, he or she undergoes a trial to test them and align them with the mains of the past. In the Elder Scrolls Online, there is a rare occurrence where a pair of twins are born under the Eclipse of Master and Secunda, and you must choose which one then becomes the main. So the biggest misconception is that there could only be one potential main at one time, which is not true given what we saw in ESO, but there could be a few, but only one is chosen. And that is pretty much it for the video guys, I really hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully we will get to see a lot of these Khajiits in the new ESO chapter coming this summer. Let me know which one you guys want to see in the comments below. Our next video will be a lore recap of the ESO main questline, so make sure you hit the subscribe button if you want to see that. It might be a little bit because I am going away for 3 weeks of army training. I might get up before then, but I might not. Either way guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure you leave a like, it helps the channel a lot. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.